Mm, good afternoon and welcome to Ami Dogs Vault. It's we're still looking for a name. Saturdays with Kristen, root beer <laughs> reviews with Kristen, something, something, something with Kristen, whatever it is, it's with Kristen because we've That's got right. fangirl Kristen right here with us. Uh, and something weird always happens. <laughs> Did you now? Did you hear that music? I didn't hear it. No. Um, for some reason, recently, um, the ad plays on. Um, I don't know. That's because it, you're getting that money, man. <laughs> you got your videos monetized. The <laughs> the ad plays uh, as soon as I start the show, which is weird. Um, that that's normal. It's a pre roll pre roll ad for a video. <laughs> That's YouTube, man. You're making that money. You're making the, those pennies. The pre-roll. Listen to you. <laughs> That's what it's called. I know. <laughs> That's what's so great. You know what you're talking about, but it's not on purpose at all. Um, it. I don't know. I'm gonna have to start figuring out how to keep that from happening. You want um, to not make money? No, no. It's <laughs> as soon as I as soon as I get this going, um, the page where the chat is. Uh, Th that video starts up. You should just pop out the chat. That's what I do. Pop I out the chat? Yeah, there's an option to pop it out. So you don't need to even have that window open. So I never even have it open. How do you do? Uh, what are you talking <laughs> about, Lassie? What are you doing to there's, me? There's what those three little talking? dots where the yeah? chat is. Top click chat. That. Yeah, click yeah. that and then hit pop out the chat. And it'll pop it out in another window. Pop out chat. So you can even Whoa. close it if you want, which is what I do because I have Hangouts, I can see you and what's going on, and then I have the chat open. Holy smoke! This whole time you didn't. No. <laughs> I there just you go. Time for Hangouts to go away and YouTube to be all different and everything. I mean, you'll still have pop out the chat though. Oh man, <laughs> I never even knew it. Yeah, I make it all big. I make it like half my screen. <laughs> so I can see it. Oh my gosh. Okay. Wow. That should help, right? Now you don't even have to watch the ad. You don't have to make that money. It's fine. I just got, <laughs> I just got rid of the whole thing. It's just there you in the chat now. Yeah, that's what I do. Uh wow. <laughs> I'm just I'm my mind is boggled. <laughs> Uh, thank you to Jesse Say What for the nice, he just gave me the nicest um, compliment on uh, um, the uh, review that I do with uh, Jenny, um, A Walk in the Woods at Midnight, our horror movie review. Um, we did let the right one in, which is not really a horror movie. It's more of a coming of age tale with a couple of vamp, with a vampire thrown in. And there's not really anything scary about it at all. But Jesse Saywet said, uh, it's a great movie, but an even better review. And so I, that was a very nice compliment. So thank you, Jesse Saywet, for that nice compliment. Um, so we are going to review our books. And you're going to have to wait for the root beer bath. But I've got everything ready. I got my bucket. And I've got the disgusting root beer, which is Diet A&W, which is gross. And I've never done it live. It's always been pre-recorded. So, there Did you go. buy the root beer just for this? Were you like, uh, I got to buy the nasty root beer? No, actually, it's been in the refrigerator for probably eight years. I don't even know why we have Diet A&W in the house. That would be scary to even drink. So I'm glad you're not even using it. <laughs> yeah. what? What? It's probably got an expiration date on I it. I would imagine. It's all faded. <laughs> it's probably 2005. Probably is. Shouldn't drink that. Yeah, it's probably gonna. It's like gonna be Pandora's box. All these evil spirits will come out of the can as soon as they <laughs> open it. It's all yeah. Um. So we're gonna review some books that we read. And did you want to start off with that book we were talking about, or did you uh, want to start off with something different? We can do that. Yeah. Sure. I've read it and you just read it this week. Yes. And let's see, what was the, uh, and that is go right ahead. 
Uh, that would be The Quantum Age by Jeff Lemire. It is, of course, the third kind of... Are they really spinoff books if they take place in the same world? I don't know what to call these. The uh, Extensions of the Universe It book. says From the World of Black Hammer. Okay. So I guess we can call them... They're in the... They're in the Black Hammer verse. Yeah, at this point, I think that's the sixth trade. If we're going by trades that Black Hammer has out. Oh, you, okay. You have to like read them in order. Yeah, I so yeah, you do. If anyone doesn't know that, you can't just jump into the Quantum Age. But if you're that far into it, uh, I loved uh, Doctor Star and Sherlock Frankenstein. I loved those. This one, uh, I was telling just before we started. I think it took the longest for me to like get into the beginning of it. I think just because I was like, wait, what are these characters? What's going on? And then of course it always comes together. So I don't know why I was so hesitant, but I loved it so much. I, it took me a bit to get used to some of the art. Like some of it, I feel like was better than other parts of it. I don't know who did the art, but. Wilfredo Torres. Is this the thing you have on your iPad? No, it's not sadly. Oh, you want me to just show yeah, while you, you talk? You want me to show art while you talk about it? Yeah, so okay. it's it's hard to like tell anyone what it's really about because if you don't know the universe already, it's a little spoilery, if not a lot spoilery. But there are extensions of characters that we know. It is a different moment in time, but it's the same universe. And just like all the other extended universe books of Black Hammer, I felt like all of the characters were intriguing. I love, you know, again, without even spoiling it, the big character from Black Hammer that shows up that you realized was part of it the whole time. You know what I'm talking about? Near the end? Near the end, yeah. Yeah. I loved that reveal. That was a great reveal. Oh, it was so good. And that really, like, that really hit me hard. I was like, okay, wait. That makes it feel better than I thought it was. Yeah. That... I was already enjoying it, but... And that, sh that shows you why you have to read it in order. You got to yeah. read Black Hammer and then read all the other Black Hammer verse books. Otherwise, so much of this wouldn't mean much. So it is kind of hard to talk about again if you're trying to be spoiler free. But that character you just showed, um, the flying guy, what's his name? Herb the or something? The, Arma the Arma Armadillo? Yeah, thing? him. Yeah, Love him. Herb. He, he was so good. <laughs> and that was a new character. Uh, and he just brought some like great humor. Mm -hmm. It was really powerful and was like a quirky psychic. And I don't know, Jeff Lemire's really killing it with like the character development within this whole universe. Like I still care. I keep thinking one of these side books, I'm not going to give a crap about, but I still gave a crap. <laughs> I, gave, I gave a lot of crap. So I was like, these characters rule. This is so good. So there are craps to be given. That's your blurb <laughs> for the back of one of there, these books. There are craps to be given. And if you give a crap about any of the Black Hammer books, like if you've read the main series and for some reason you haven't kept going, please read Sherlock Frankenstein. Please read Dr. Star. And then please read the Quantum Age because I think out of all of them, this may have been my favorite now. Um, I and I 100% agree with what Kristen's saying. This is, um, yeah, she's right. Quantum Age is everything you want in a book, um, especially with the reveal, as she said at the end. Um, he Jeff Lemire just keeps getting better and better in this world he's building. Just keeps getting more interesting, and mm -hmm. it's not hard to um kind of wrap your arms around it there's just enough characters in each book that it's understandable this is not some x-men type of universe where you know there's strings going everywhere and cables his own grandson and everything this is <laughs> this is um very understandable and very much um uh, it's like the you're at the birth of the uni this Black Hammer verse, and it's um, you're able to grasp all of it very easily. It's 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 really remarkable. Whoops, I don't want to show that. Is, that's a great point because it feels like it could mm -hmm. be on the same level as the big two universes, but it is so much less daunting. So yeah. if you've ever felt like you know, say you recently got into comics, you got into it even five years ago and you feel like you can't catch up and there's all this history that you can't understand from like the X-Men or something like that. And you want a good team book, like this is it. Like you can jump into this universe 
and know everything, it's still young. You know, you can easily get the six trades, you can get the library edition and get the next, what is it, four trades, I guess? Three, I don't know. There's, it's easy. Jump in if you have it. Yeah, that's a good point because um, it's clear now that he's building a universe with these three spinoffs or these create the creation of the Black Hammer verse with the books that you've said and the, the Black Hammer itself uh, um, books. It seems for the time being, I don't know how long it's going to last, but it, it seems as if he is creating a universe and it's easy to get into it. a newcomer can get right into it. Yeah, Lloyd Wong in the chat is saying, so it's Black Hammer Library Edition, then Sherlock Frankenstein, Dr. Star, and Quantum Mage. That is the order, that's right. Yeah. Although, actually, is that right? The, the Library Edition's two trades, so I think there's one after that, and then you should start Sherlock Frankenstein. Um, I think that's right. That's probably right, but that's not what I did. Oh, uh, wait, what did, I, what did I do? I don't think I've read that extra... I think I did the first, the library edition, and then the volume three, which is called um, something. What is that called? Uh, you know what? I don't know, because I didn't read it. You I didn't read, read it at all? Oh, wait. You know what? I did read it, but then, what is that called? I'm, I'm looking it up, because I'm blanking. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to Goodreads. You need to do that. <laughs> you still need to do that. I know. I need to I need to start getting all my stuff on my phone. Okay. Age of Doom, that's it. Okay. So, so really I, what I did was the Black Hammer Library, then Age of Doom, and then I continued with those three. Okay, that's what I did too. I just didn't have Age of Doom filed with this. I've got it over in a different um I've got it in a different place than I had these. Um, yeah, that's what I did too. But I will swap Age of Doom out for when the next trade paper comes, trade paperback comes out. I'm not going to get that because I'm just going to wait for the next library edition to come out. Yeah, I'm wondering what they're going to do with that, especially with there being like Age of Doom and then all these extras. Because I thought they may do one of just like the additional series, but oh, that's a good point. Maybe they'll do Age of Doom, Sherlock, Doctor Star, and then they'll start the next one with Quantum Age. That is a good point. I hadn't thought that these spinoffs might be in it, might be have a library edition made of it. I hope they do. Uh, you're being asked how somebody can follow you on Goodreads. That's a good question. I think you have to look up by email. Um, and that's hard because I, I don't necessarily want to just give out my email. Someone found me, though. There have been people who found me on here. So mm. once I figure that out, if I can link you um, in the chat, I'll do that. I've been trying to figure that out. I, that should be easy, but I can't, I don't know. So if anybody knows, let me know and I'll try to figure that out. Yeah, I'd be reluctant to just hand out my email too. No offense to anyone in the chat, but I already get a lot of spam. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's see. There will be a Black Hammer Justice League crossover written by Michael Walsh. Not sure this will be as good. Just paste your Goodreads link into the next video description. Is there just a link? Maybe that's where I'm confused. I'm looking it up. <laughs> okay. We're working on it. But we're not sure that I don't, yeah, I don't blame you for being reluctant to do your um, email. Okay, I'm going to paste this link of my profile. You guys can tell me if that actually works because I don't know. Or I'll click on it and see if it works. Oh, uh, you have to. Yeah, that looks like it'll work. Okay. Oh, I have to say show it. Error. Try again. Hmm. Okay. It looks like it worked. Okay, cool. That was easier than I thought. For some reason, I thought you had to search. 
but that makes sense. Okay, yeah, you guys can click that. Add me as if you want as a friend. Follow me, whatever you want to do. Make Jess get one, you know. <laughs> Start a campaign. Uh, I'm too scared of Goodreads. It's another technology thing I have to learn. But it helps your life. <laughs> I wouldn't know what I've read if I didn't go to my challenge like every single day. Um, be like, yeah. what did I read? Oh, it's I, just I know. I do need to get something. I do need inventory, an inventory counter thingy on my phone. I should be beeping inventory in as I get it in, and I should be taking a shelf cubicle a day. It wouldn't take me long to get this whole inventory in my phone, and there'd be no more um, double dipping, double ordering. I'm sure that seems like a daunting task, but... Once you do it, it's less daunting. Yeah. I. It, it's just a question of getting started. I sure. just need to do it. There's so many books. Ah. Ah. Okay. So quantum <laughs> quantum age. Um. That you're. Uh, you are gonna bug me until I start doing. Does it have to be Goodreads or? CLZ, can I do library thing? That thing seems pretty easy. Uh, yeah, the CLZ, CLZ is for like your, yeah, categorizing your collection, um, having your library, like knowing what you have. So like I take CLZ and I, if I'm in a comic shop or I'm at a half price books, like I don't, I don't know everything that I have. Or right. if I have like a random trade, like in a volume two, but I need volume four and I have seven, you know, it's good for that. Wait, what's good for that? CLZ is? CLZ. Um, Goodreads is good to know what the crap I've read. Oh, the stuff you've read. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Here's the library thing. I don't have any, I don't think I have anything in it yet. I have a bunch of apps. <laughs> I have a book, book buddy. I've got, I got a bunch of apps for this. I just haven't done anything with them. And I did CLZ. For all my floppies, I did all my floppies in CLZ, and then I sold them all. So I need to. Um, you could just erase your whole collection and sell. Yeah, I need to get rid of all that because I sold my floppies three years ago. Um, but it's the best. I wouldn't know what I had if I didn't have like, CLZ. Especially, yeah, especially if I'm not at home and I can't walk in here and like know what I have. Mm -hmm. you know, I'll be like, wait, which TMT book is out of print? And I see a what? Like, and that's that's where it gets me good. That's where I like it. Yeah. Okay. Jess, use college ruled paper for your list. You'll read more. Uh, I do use college ruled paper, <laughs> as a matter of fact, for what I've read. That's how I keep track of what I've read for the cat past couple of years that I write down on paper what I've read. That's how archaic I am. <laughs> if it works for you, that's cool. But does it work for you? <laughs> it's better than doing nothing, which is what I was that's doing true. before. That's true. Nothing. And then the, the Omni's awards would come around every year and I go, uh, what did I read? <laughs> so uh, last year I started writing it down. Um, I mean, but you know, this Goodreads challenge every year, can you see this? Yeah. What is I that? I mean, so literally January 1st, I go to Goodreads and I select how many books I want to read that year. And then I challenge myself to read that many. So I'm behind on my challenge. I'm only 42% there. That's not good, but I'm working on it. So then I'm like, what have I read? And then I can just scroll through like what I've read and what I rated it. And there we go. Now I know what I've read. But this is what I do all the time. And for every show, I'm like, I don't remember. What did I read? Right? Yeah. It's very helpful. Okay. That's good reads. Yes. Okay. The, uh, if I start a book, I go to Goodreads, put it on my currently reading shelf. Even if I start it and I pick up something else, I'm like, I got to hold myself accountable. I have too many on my currently reading. If you guys go to that link, you'll be like, what is she doing? I don't know what I'm doing. But <laughs> <laughs> there's some stuff I started and I just can't pick back up right now for some reason. So I keep starting new stuff until I like it. I'm in a moment. I don't know. But I'll see it on my shelf and it'll bother me until I finish it. Yeah. 
And then once I finish it, I got, I'd immediately go, okay, I read that, and then I rate it, and I'm done. Okay, so CLZ is like your inventory app, mm -hmm. and then Goodreads is what you've read app. Yes. Okay. Okay. What you've read, what you want to read, whatever you want to do with it. But yeah, I just keep track of what I read. Okay, so the, okay, I got it. That makes sense then. Um, okay, good. Now I know the difference. Okay, so I just need, so you got two apps that just keep it um, simple then. Mm -hmm. So seals, so, okay, so Goodreads is, and then you, do you write up a review for it too, or you don't go that far in Goodreads? I don't go that far, but you can. You can, okay. Yeah, you can easily, you can post a short one if you want a long one, and then other people can see that, which is fun, but you know, usually I just do a star rating and that's it. Okay. All right. Good. So Goodreads is where you keep track. That would stop me from the college ruled paper then. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> okay, I, I think I can do it. So CLZ, I would only need to scan in something for CLZ and then Goodreads is where I would put it once I'm done reading it. Yeah, or if you're like me, like I'll take a book, and I'll scan the back of it, I'll put that as currently reading, the yeah. moment I pick it up. Then when I'm done reading it, I go back, I say update, finished, I put a star rating and I hit done. And it okay. adds it to my red shelf. Okay. Add it and to then your, if you're like okay, me, your red shelf. Okay. Yeah, if you're like me, you know, you can challenge yourself every year. A lot, a lot of people love that part of it because then you can just go to your reading challenge and figure out where you're at. Are you behind? Like, drive yourself crazy if you want. Or <laughs> you can make your goal not crazy and then reach it real fast and then you feel good. But I don't like to do that. <laughs> One I like book. to drive myself crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, I mm, I don't want to set a goal for myself. I just like reading one book and then moving on to the next. You can make it one book if you want. <laughs> if you be like, oh my gosh, yay! You you got your goal. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> one thin Marvel um, mm -hmm. trade paperback like this. Done. Done. I'm the man. Okay, so you read Quantum Age, and I did. I'll just go quickly through what I did was a bunch of. Um, I, I'll go through quickly through some things that I read. I read stuff for Omni Bros. I read stuff for uh, Tyler Blunt and I do a review show. Um, the um, I'll do so. I'll do those have already been reviewed, but I'll but that's what a lot of my time was taken up reading. So I'll just mention them quickly. I did the Mike Costa run of Venom, one through four. Um, and this is where Eddie Brock gets reunited with Venom. And I'll be honest, I did not know, I don't know a whole lot about Venom um, in this way. Um, but this uh, dives back into Venom. And I learned a lot about Venom that I didn't know before. It deals with the symbiotes. Uh, it deals with the symbiotes' feelings and thought process a lot more. It's not just about Eddie Brock wearing the symbiote. It's a lot about the symbiote itself. So I thought it was good because I got to know uh, the symbiote itself and uh, the very end of it uh, is leading up to, it's about uh, to spawn again. And um, I'm not sure where, oh, this is, that's number one. Number four, um, the nativity, he's about, uh, the Venom suit is about to spawn again, and um, the government and some other agencies want to make sure that, oh, that was weird. This is very weird. That why I'm having such trouble finding where it is, is they, um, a lot of people want to make sure that the um, symbiote uh, is under control, the, the spawning of it, because it's always turned out bad. Carnage and uh, whoever the other, all the different spawn, spawnage, uh, 
uh, thingies that have that he's given birth to. Um, so it finished about that far in, and then they give gave you parts two and three of Carn of the Carnage series, Carnage and Venom together versus Spider Man. They didn't give you parts one, which is the weirdest thing. They gave you parts two and three to fill it out, which was stupid. Who made that decision? I don't know. It's a really <laughs> stupid decision. Of course, everybody goes to Omar. Hey, Omar, talk to somebody at Marvel and ask them why they made that <laughs> stupid decision. Tell them they're dumb. Yeah, tell them they're dumb. And uh, Omar's like, yeah, okay, that's what I'm going to do. Um, <laughs> So I liked I liked that Venom series, and then uh, Tyler Blunt and I read uh, Infamous Iron Man, uh, where Doctor Doom. This is right after Secret Wars, where Doctor Doom decides he wants to be a good guy and takes over the Iron. Uh, Tony Stark is missing, so Doctor Doom takes over the um, Iron Man outfit and outfit the armor. And because Tony Stark's missing, so since uh, the armor doesn't have an owner, uh, Doctor Doom says, "Oh well, then why don't I just borrow it and become a good guy for a while?" So there's two trades of this, and I have found in my time as a comic book reader that Iron Man is probably my least favorite um, hero. Uh, if if any of the comic books were written as well as Robert Downey Jr. acts as he is in the Avengers movies, then that would be a good book to read. But and probably somebody out there can tell is going to tell me, oh no, you have to read Iron Man, uh, Volume Two, Issue Thirty Five demon in a bottle or something and I'm and I'd be like yeah okay but I found Iron Man to be very boring and this has been the most interesting Iron Man's ever been I think is infamous Iron Man Doctor Doom trying to be Iron Man um so those are six of the books that I read this week that I've already reviewed so I just wanted to go over them real quick what did you say that was infamous Iron Man or invincible Iron Man infamous Iron Man okay. but it goes into Invincible. These are both written okay. by Bendis with art by Maliv. And then it goes into the first volume of Invincible. To, to wrap up the story, I downloaded it and got it on my iPad. Uh, Invincible Iron Man, where, and I think it's called Search for Tony Stark, or We Found Tony Stark, or Here He Is Tony Stark, or something like that. Um, they find they find Tony Stark and they deal with Doctor Doom. Doctor Doom decides he's still going to stay uh, a good guy, even though Tony Stark reappears, and that's Invincible um, Iron Man Volume One. I think it's a, a extra thick trade paperback uh, that I got online uh, digitally to to wrap this up. Okay, because I was. I was wondering because I have the hardcover of Invincible. Um, yeah, there, but I don't know that. So I didn't know if that was related or if um, that's after or before. <laughs> this, in, this infamous Iron Man 7 through 12. So it's infamous Iron Man 1 through 12 that these two trades are. And then there's a trade that is Invincible Iron Man um i don't have my ipad with me um i'm not sure what it covers um let's see i also have an invincible iron man by bendis and malib but i don't think that trade is in there i think it takes place after the trade that i read that finished up this run okay cool yeah i think you need to get it separately I mean, I could run upstairs and get my iPad, but I'm trying to think where uh, I might have the Comixology stuff that I bought it from on my computer. Uh, because I shut everything down to just the chat and the Google Hangouts, and now I don't know where anything is on my computer now. 
because I had you pop out that chat. You had me pop out the chat. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I. Okay. It's. Um. I mean, if you want, I can go upstairs and you can talk. You can. Why don't you um review a book, um, and and I'll just go grab uh my iPad and come back real quick. Okay. Yeah, let me put let me mute my microphone and you just review a book and I'll go so I can answer your question. Okay, I'm muting. Okay. All right. I read Stringers. This is an Oni Press book. Uh, it's by a lot of people. It's by Mark Guggenheim, Justin Greenwood, Ryan Hill, and Crank. I imagine Crank does the oh letters. Okay. Um, this guy, Mark Guggenheim. He apparently writes for a lot of TV. He's done uh, Law and Order and some other stuff. But this is basically about um, these two guys. They run around, uh, they're freelance, and they get footage of like car accidents and high speed chases and things that the local news would be interested in and they can sell it to. And it was interesting. Um, like I said, this is Oni Press. I like a lot of Oni Press. I like picking up random weird Oni books that I haven't heard of. I think this is a few years old now. Uh, I know at the beginning, there is a forward by Mark Guggenheim. Basically, it starts with F. Jake Gyllenhaal. I'm serious, F him. And while you're at it, F. Dan Gilroy, too. Um, they're talking about the movie Nightcrawler, and I guess that's somewhat similar to this. I actually haven't seen it, so if anyone in the chat's seen it, let me know how you like that movie. But I guess they beat uh, Mark Guggenheim to this. He kind of sat on this idea for a long time, so he's mad about it. I don't know. But these two guys, they're trying to get all this footage to sell for local news, and they get caught up in a big mess, and there's a lot of violence. And... I overall don't recommend this. I found it fine. It was okay. I don't think it's worth your time, though. And maybe if you've seen Nightcrawler and you like that, maybe you'll enjoy this more. But I was like, it's fine. That's how I felt. Jess is back. Doesn't sound like I missed much. I don't think you did. That's why I chose that one. I was like, ah, this one was fine. You don't need this in your life. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is this the Invincible Iron Man you're talking about? I, yeah. 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 It's Invincible it. Iron Man 1 through 14 by Bendis with art by, oh, Di Marquez and Diodato. Okay. So we're talking about the same hardcover. Mm -hmm. So Infamous Iron Man is 1 through 12. And that's before that. Yes. Okay. Um, and let's go to Comixology. Um, Invincible Iron Man, The Search for Tony Stark, issues 593, 595 through 599. And it looks like this. Okay. So this is what this is what wraps up. So I would assume then they renumbered everything and then went to this, because then Tony's back. Um, before tearing apart Tony's like, and believe, believe the Iron Man teams. Up. Yeah, I think. Yeah, this is before Civil War II. Gosh, this was only $40 for this big... Yeah, it's pretty chunky. I got it, like, used for dirt cheap. That's pretty good price. That's... And now I'm wondering, like... So, I have to read that stuff beforehand to understand it. That's kind of my question. And it seems weird that they just threw that in a hardcover. I don't know. They j okay, well, I'm sorry, what was your question? Do this you need, do yeah, you need stuff infamous Iron Man to understand this? Right. Um, and Tony encounters someone who may just turn out to be both. An old enemy returns Madame Mask. Victor Von Doom as you've never seen him before. Hmm. I don't know. You know what? Has anybody in the chat read? Um, there's Kenny. Kenny Crayley, how's it going, Kenny? Um, I don't, 
I haven't Does read this. Know? I don't even, it's still in the shrink wrap, so I don't know. <laughs> um, I, I'm just curious because I haven't touched it yet. So. Yeah. Um, do you have, um, well, this, I found this to be worth reading, so you can certainly okay. read it on Hoopla. Yeah, totally. um, well, or Marvel U or something, yeah. Or Marvel U, yeah. This was worth reading. I liked it. Both Tyler and I, uh, at first, we sort of didn't like it, and then we both felt like, wait a sec, we were both compelled to download and read the follow-up on our iPads, so it was compelling. We felt like it was compelling enough to make us want to go further and find out how it got resolved, so we decided we did like it. Um, so it's basically that's just three trades and then the hardcover is what you're saying. Yeah, and okay, then that's and then that. this. I'll do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I thought Infamous Iron Man was actually, and it's got Riri Williams in it, the volume two, and the Thing is in it, smashing everything, trying to kill Doctor Doom still and take him in, and so I yeah, it was good. And I, the the parts of this that had Iron Man in it. Oh, okay. Summary collects five ninety three through six hundred. Okay, that's that must be when they um, decided to renumber and then went to that Invincible Iron Man. Um, I I will open that up and I will read it, but I'm prepared to be disappointed because Iron Man is just really. Uh, boring to me. Okay, let's see. Somebody said the infamous Iron Man ties in with Riri Williams stuff. And to be honest, your life will be better skipping the rest of Iron Man. There's, <laughs> there's also a fourth Iron Man book that ties into Invincible Iron Man. Uh... Okay. They don't make this easy. No, I, I, if you've already got Invincible Iron Man, yeah, I would just say everything else can be MU and stuff like that. That's what I'll do. Yeah. And I'm getting thirsty and I'm not saying this in a judgmental way, but I've got my Spreckers. So it reminds me, yeah. have you had your Frost <laughs> Top yet? I haven't. It's in the fridge. You know, when Reed gets home, I'll have him bring it in here. And I'll open it up on air. How about that? <laughs> I'm not saying it in a judgy way at all. <laughs> I'm judging myself. <laughs> it just means that you've um, just postponed it and are, will enjoy it later. Enjoy it. Yeah. You, you've just uh, put off enjoying it. That's all. I have to work tomorrow, so maybe I'll treat myself today. It's a good idea. Sure. Sure. You're just withholding it yeah. for a later enjoyment period. Yeah. Maybe later in the show. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, I read a book that I enjoyed a little bit. I'd give it a probably 7 out of 10. Uh, Faria hated it, but I liked it a little bit. semi automagic uh, I'll do my thing that I do best. Professor Alice Creed doesn't have tenure, and she never will, as long as she keeps ditching her lectures to kill monsters. But when a dark force from between universes begins seducing young souls through an innocent computer game. She packs her occult relics, holy water, and iPad to kick Eldritch, Eldritch ass. <laughs> this was actually pretty fun, I thought. It's about a... Um, she's uh, she's uh, a college professor that um, goes out and, and definitely does tackle a wide variety of demons and monsters. And there were, as I recall, there were two story arcs. The art is really good, Jerry Ordway art. Um, it's a dark horse book, but I think it started out as a um, Kickstarter. Um, oh, it says from their claimed runs in Dark Horse Presents. Some, but something somebody said, I think, on the Omnibus Group that it started out as a Kickstarter. Um, but there's two story arcs, and I thought they were. Uh, uh, both interesting takes on uh, supernatural, magic, demonology. Uh, they were interesting enough to me. Um, there was enough um, 
kind of twists and turns and different ways of presenting uh, kind of a techno occult type of thing where she's using computers and, and as they said, iPads and she's able to con uh, use spells that twist reality and um, uh, like a student gets her eyes popped out by a demon and she goes into her own collection and gives her new eyes that are a different color and she drop gets casts an illusion of herself dead that gets her eaten by a, a demon and allows her to go into like the belly of this beast and the beast thinks he's eaten a dead professor when in fact she's really alive and she rescues all these people in the belly of this beast and so i thought it was i thought it was fun i'd give it like a seven and a half out of ten um it, it's only 13 bucks um for two stories and then you know you can get it on ist uh for half 42 percent off of that um if you're into the occult i think it's um worth it I enjoyed it by, um, let's see, who is it? Alex DeCampi. Alex DeCampi, art by Jerry Ordway. So, yeah, I mean, I think it was. it's worth the money. It's a cheap, fun. It was cheap and fun. That art looks fun. Yeah, yeah, Jerry Ordway's a good artist. Yeah. Speaking of more fun. Let's hear it. I read the latest oatmeal book, which is called My Cat is More Impressive Than Your Baby. <laughs> what is this now? Oatmeal. oatmeal. I don't think oatmeal. I know oatmeal books. Oh, uh, okay. Well, they're known for their fun comic strips. They're humorous, you know. They're silly times, and it's fun. So, I mean, that's all this is. It's a collection of their funny things. And, you know, some of them are just fact. Like, this guy's sad and lonely at a party. But then he has kitties, so he's happy. That's great. And by his emoticons above him, you can tell? It's, it's the battery level. Oh, the so battery like, level. Yeah, so, like, you're <laughs> drained at the party. And I can relate to this. <laughs> yeah, when you highlight you. That, you can yeah. relate to it. Um, I highlighted you so we, you can show more. Yeah, and it's just fun silly silly art and you know they're they're standalone little funny comic strips about various things it's not all about cats and babies but some of it is uh yeah. actually some of that's at the beginning where is um this published or is that how it's published in a book like that um where's it originally from you could get it on the oatmeal it's probably the oatmeal.com i always read these collections they come out with though what is the so, oatmeal uh, it's just funny, uh, like comic strips like this, little little cartoony things. It's a website. Wait, what are we? What are we even talking about? You sort of <laughs> lost me. It, yeah, it's a website. It's by by the oatmeal right here. Okay, it's an uh, the oatmeal is a website with funny cartoons. Yeah, it's all by I think Matthew Emmon does it. Yeah, creator mm. of the oatmeal, the number one times best selling, blah blah blah. So there's probably a website. I've actually never been to it, but yeah, that's what I'm assuming. Someone said their cat isn't impressive, just fat. Well, maybe he needs a diet. <laughs> 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 but yeah, they're all just really funny. And, you know, I like cat humor, um, but also I can't relate to a lot of cat humor because my cats aren't angry, evil creatures that a lot of people like to say they are. <laughs> so I'm like, well, it's funny, but it's not my cat. But yeah, it's just... Um, Funny stuff. Funny stuff. I mean, look at this. That's funny stuff. So if you want, you know, let's say you read something that's horrifically upsetting and brutally. <laughs> that is funny. Maybe like, uh, maybe you just read a really dark, depressing Batman story. Pick up something like this. Yeah, like, that's actually redundant, but. Well, <laughs> you're right. You're right. But, you know, all oatmeal uh, books are just a good time. Oh, good. Well, I, you know, there's sort of an apologetic tone in your voice, and I don't think there needs to be. I, I, I think comics can can always be fun and silly. We need a place. Oh no, I, I'm, not, place I'm not apologizing for it being silly. I just yeah. think so we need this a lot, you know. <laughs> 
So I love picking these up because they make me yeah. happy. I, there needs to be a place for lighthearted fun in our book reading. Mm -hmm. Lots of times. I mean, you pick up the newspaper and you feel like jumping off a ledge. So we need to have lots of lighthearted, goofy you, stuff. You're exactly right, especially right now. I mean, come on. Here's here's a real quick one. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I love I love stuff like this. That's awesome. And I mean, I'm a big fan of the silly old comic strips too. So like. I like I like my comics silly and dark. I like it all. And this is great. So this was really great. A good collection. You can easily find these at local libraries I found, which is what I've done. Oh, really? So, yeah, this is from my library. So, and they love getting them. They always become bestsellers. So easily get for free at your library. Make yourself happy. Get a free book. Mm. Okay. Let's see. Question in the chat. I'm going to have a hard time answering. What is your favorite book by Jeff Lemire? Uh, Plutona. You love Plutona. <laughs> Stop that. People you. people will think you're telling the truth. Stop that, you. <laughs> oh, it's good. Uh, Why did anyone ask me? Is it because everyone knows? Um, uh, what's your favorite Jeff Lemire book? Because everyone knows already. <laughs> Essex County. Oh, wow. I don't think I've ever seen that. Yeah, it's on my arm. Holy smoke. How long have you had that? Oh, my gosh. A lot yeah. of years. Forever? Yeah, like I read Essex County back when it came out, which I feel like was... Oh, that seems like it's been forever. Forever. Maybe yeah. 10 years now? I'm going to look. When did that come out? Tell me, Goodreads. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's been forever. It's been a quite a long time. I want to say at least 10 years. Yeah, it seems like it. Um, let's see. Gosh, I don't, you know, it might be one of the Black Hammer spinoffs, I've almost. I feel like those things are just so interesting and fun to me. These Black Hammer spinoffs. Um, <laughs> I almost want to go to his wiki page and see exactly what he's written. Uh, Banana Jester, good. I hope you li like Steve Lickman. Thanks. Um, let's see. Let me go. Let me see if I can figure out how to get back to the internet. Oh, there it is. Okay. Just bring up another window. Yeah. Okay. I just got this dropped off, by the way. It's going to happen. Oh, Nice. They're so big, though. This is daunting. This is bigger than my oh, head. Oh, yeah. You don't, nobody's saying you have to read, the, eat, drink the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Don't, uh, don't drink the whole thing at all. Certainly. Oh, it's Moon Knight. I need to read that. Damn it. I got to read that thing, man. Okay. Just give me. Yeah. Okay. This is great, but it's no Spreckers. Ah, <laughs> well, Spreckers is good. That's yeah. my hot take. That's your hot take? I like this a lot. It's cheaper. It's cheaper than Spreckers for oh, sure. Oh, it's like a dollar a bottle. Yeah, and it's good, but I like Spreckers more. It's just, okay. I think Spreckers more, is more vanilla-y. Yeah, Spreckers is more vanilla-y, and that's got a little bit more um, uh, licorice-y, I've noticed, taste to it. Um, uh Frosthop does. Let's see. Animal Man. Yeah, I liked his Animal Man. Just Sleep Dark. We did a lot for DC. Extraordinary X-Men. Moon Knight, I gotta read. Death of X doesn't count. Nobody should read that. Thanos, I like this Thanos. Gideon Falls is awesome. Mm -hmm. Royal City was really good. Descender was great. The World of Black Hammer. Is awesome. Did you like the underwater welder? I have not read that. Oh, I, that's one of my favorites. I do have a special copy of it. The hardcover. Yeah, the hardcover that's signed and hand numbered or something. All new Hawkeye. Uh, gosh, I don't know. I forgot about. Um, 
I forgot about um, 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 uh, Gideon Falls. That thing's crazy good. I need to finish that. Um, I've only got the two trades, so I don't know where we're going with it. Um, gosh, Gideon Falls is really good. I will say Trillium. I, I'm not sure I understood Trillium. I need to read that again. I need to uh, get Trillium and read it again. Um, the sender was great. I'm, uh, I don't know. I'm think I'm going to go with a tie between Gideon Falls and the Quantum, uh, the uh, Black Hammer Universe books. And that makes me want to read Moon Knight. I still need to do that too. Yeah. Green Arrow was good, yeah. Um, let's see. What uh, I think it's your turn to review a book. Is it? Yeah, I just reviewed okay. something. <laughs> okay, I'll trust you. <laughs> All right. Um, this is by Holly Chisholm. It's called Just Peachy, comics about depression, anxiety, love, and finding the humor in being sad. Oh my goodness. It's a great little, it's nonfiction, stories about her life and dealing with mental illness. And I love the simplicity in her art. And they're just, you know, most of these are little quick, a little moments. Some of them are very uplifting. Some of them are just true to her life and sad, you know, um, but they're all really, you know, ultimately it ends on a really positive note and it's all really like relatable. Even if you don't have these struggles, you know, you can just relate to her life and things she has to deal with. And like I said, I love these little like line drawings. I think they're really cute and I love art like that. And, you know, we need more books that actually talk about these mental health issues that people don't talk about enough. Um, thankfully, we are seeing more things like this. I also picked this up at my local library. Maybe you can find it at yours. Mm. And I love little nonfiction graphic telling. So this was really great. I love this. How did you even know about it? I just found it at my library. Oh, really? Yeah, often I'll just browse and I'll see new things I've never heard of or seen before. And I'm like, oh, yeah, this looks like my jam. Let's get this. You have an awesome library. I do. <laughs> I don't even know that that would exist even in a bookstore around me, if I could find a bookstore. That's sad, too, isn't it? Mm-hmm. But also, who wants to pay cover price for anything? So I get it. <laughs> well, that's a good point. Um, I read a really good book, Cemetery Beach by Warren Ellis. Um, I didn't even know about this book, um, and I think it just came out. I think this year, let me see if I'm right or wrong. June, 2019. Yeah. So it's brand new Warren Ellis with Jason Howard on the art. So it's really great art and it's Warren Ellis. Um, uh, it's always a challenge to explain a Warren Ellis book. Um, this guy is, starts out he's captured um in the first panel and he starts it turns out that there is a gateway to um we've apparently back um uh let's see if i get this right we've no okay i want to make sure i don't goof it up with another uh, book. <laughs> I've read so many books. Um, Jason Howard, who drew Astounding Wolfman, but I won't uh, hold that against him because um, there was nothing wrong with the art in it. Um, they've colonized, it looks like Earth has colonized this other planet and the people on this planet called earth old home. Um, 
and they send out a scout who gets captured, Earth does. Um, the, the dictator on this planet, this guy, does not want Earth to um, really find out about him and his planet that earth has um it turns out that the earth populated it okay warren you know i love warren ellis but sometimes it gets so goofy that i have trouble um i have trouble explaining it um because <laughs> there's so many weird details this guy basically wants to escape this planet and get back to he wants to escape his jail cell get back to his landing craft uh or the um the wormhole that exists on cemetery beach on this planet and get back to earth and they are determined to stop him from doing that because they don't want earth to know what's going on on this planet uh, because they're afraid Earth will um, find out that um, these um, the people in charge there have found a way to be immortal. There's uh, there is um, organic food and that seeps out of the ground. There's these energy cells that can be basically dug up from the ground. So you've got free food and free energy that's basically limitless that pops up out of the ground. And then you've got this, um, you've got this uh, kind of fungusy water that if you swim in it, it's saved for only the top officials. But if you swim in it, it revitalizes all your organs and skin and stuff and keeps you young and healthy. So you'd think it'd be paradise, but this uh, dictator has, of course, um, pillaged it and he's the ruler of the entire planet, which they call a giant toilet planet. This guy, um, there, it's basically Mad Max. This whole book is like a Mad Max where they're trying to escape at top rate. He, he grabs a woman from the, the jail because she knows the area and says, just help me escape um, and you'll have your freedom too. And so they're bombing around this planet trying to get back to Cemetery Beach. And um, the dictator doesn't want anybody else to know what a good gig he has with limitless food, energy, growing out of the ground and this um, kind of uh, Raza Ghoul type Lazarus pit ocean that uh, the top officials can swim in and stay young. So it's a big chase to keep this guy from uh, getting to his uh, wormhole that'll take him back to Earth. He was a scout that was sent there from Earth. Uh, this was a great book. It it was, um, you know, it, it was only a short window to build a world in, but, uh, and it's all told on the fly as there, these, this man and the scout, I'm sorry, this woman who's, who's the pilot that's helping him try and escape uh, are bombing around on every kind of vehicle they can possibly uh, steal and on foot, flying, driving, any, possible way they can get to Cemetery Beach with fabulous art and this is from the mind of the genius of Warren Ellis um, and you learn things as you're going along bombing along on the way to Cemetery Beach you learn about this um, this complex uh, planet and why it does the guy doesn't want to be discovered and it's great I highly recommend it to everybody uh, especially fans of Warren Ellis, Cemetery Beach. That sounds crazy, and I'm going to get it on Hoopla. Okay. <laughs> Lucky you and your damn Hoopla. <laughs> so anyone watching who has Hoopla, it's on there.
So what I read next is nothing like what you just read. <laughs> <laughs> you read you read nothing what like what I read. We don't read I, that's why we're perfect. That's actually why we're perfect for this show because we read such different stuff. I, I, mean, I love it. We both love the quantum age. So well, that's true. there's a thing that'll yeah. All the Lemire stuff we'll we'll agree on, apparently, because we both hated Plutona. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't I don't mind that we, I think it's perfect that we have such different tastes in books. We do like a lot of the same stuff, but we read on a weekly basis much different stuff, which is what I think is great. Mm -hmm. It would get boring if not, right? Yeah, if, if all we did like, was talk about the same books, I yeah. don't think it would be interesting. I was like, coming up, all this venom, like, <laughs> like who am I? <laughs> Yeah, right. So the next thing I read is Donald Duck, Christmas on Bear Mountain. This is the old Carl Bark stuff. That's a classic. I'd never read it. I'd never read any of his stuff, but I'm getting really into the Duck books. Uh, you know, I love Don Rosa. I finished up one of those recently, and I was going through the back notes on these Fantagraphics editions. They do it in the um, Barks books, too, so let me show you what these look like. But there's notes for every single story they put into these books so there's these story notes and specifically in the barks books because you know he's not alive uh they're all like professors and various other intellectual people who are you know they'll give commentary on the stories so i noticed that in the back of the don rosa books and i'm reading through them and there's a whole section because don rosa took so heavily from barks ducks books for his duck books of like, here's the things that I've hidden that were in the Barks books. And I'm like, hey, wait, I'm reading these in the wrong order. I need to go back in time and read the super classics and then pick up the Don Rosa stuff. So I have that background knowledge. Oh. So that's what I decided to do. Let's see, when did these come out? Do we know? We do know. I don't know when. I want to say this is the 40s stuff. Yeah, I think yeah. it is. I think it is. Uh, 1947. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, if you guys haven't ever read this stuff, I mean, it's so fun. It's just, it's just pure fun. And of course you're in the forties, so you're going to run into some racism <laughs> Yeah. and other various things. Uh, what I found was the best way to read these volumes is read one of the stories, go to the back, read the story notes, because often with, you know, some of the unfortunate racist elements and other things you will see people talking about it and they're not making any excuses but also i mean unfortunately that was the times and you know you'll get more out of the stories i've at least i found that i did if i would read one go back to the notes read more into it mm. and it also like explain metaphors and stuff that maybe i didn't understand yeah or like even words from that time that like we don't even use now Right, that was a long time ago. Yeah, it was so very long. It was, you know, right after the Second World War. Definitely, and there were like expressions, or even like he would, you know, maybe a war event happened or something like that that he would be talking about in the story, which is about Donald Duck being goofy, and I wouldn't even get the actual underlying like <laughs> implications mm -hmm. until I went back and like read these notes, and I'm like, oh. This is all way deeper than I even realized, mm. which is super fun. So that these is. are classics, and I had a really great time, and I'm loving these books. So pick these up if you haven't. They're worth it. That's awesome. And these are, like, so well done. The pages are kind of – it's not quite matte, but kind of. They're soft. I like them. Who does those? Uh, Fantagraphics. Fantagraphics. Yeah, they, they put out a great product. And they've been coming out with these box sets. They'll like bundle two volumes and that makes them cheaper. And who doesn't love a box set? And that's how I've been getting them. Right. Yeah. Box sets. Those are of anything are so great. Um, Jesse say what? No, I have not read the Don Rosa run. I've read a lot of Carl Barks, but I have not read any Don Rosa. I know how great he is, but I haven't read any of his stuff yet. And those books too, like they're actually, these are kind of standard. They're bigger. They're oversized. They're a little wider. The libraries from Fantagraphics, and they're gorgeous too. Yeah, Don Rosa's extremely talented. Um, my last book is two books, and they're I'm going to do them together um, since they're both from the Sandman universe. 
I just got them and I wanted to read them. One's Lucifer, the new Lucifer, and the other's the Dreaming. Um, one, and, and uh, they both start out with a story by Neil Gaiman, um, uh, which is called, um, wait a sec. Let's see. Now, I believe they're both, yeah, the Sandman universe. Let's see. Let, let me just make sure my facts are right. Yeah. They both start out with a book called the Sand, with a story called the Sandman Universe, which is written by a story by Neil Gaiman, written by Cy Sprayer, Cat Howard, Nalo Hopkinson, and Dan Waters. So this story is in both the books. And it's an interesting story. It talks about um, it talks about uh, Dora, who's um, in the dreaming, and it's a it's a story about um, it's in both books. So you only you know obviously need to read it once. Um, so it talks about um, Matthew the Raven and Tim Hunter and then it, it talks about um, a cast of a bunch of characters is what it it all deals with a bunch of the story the first story deals with a bunch of characters from the dreaming so it's sort of a catch-up on what they've been up to at first. Um, then you get to the, um, and it, it ends the same way with the frame broken on the endless gallery with Daniel, um, the Sandman, having quit the dreaming. So this whole first book, the dreaming, he's quit uh, dream has quit um, the dream world. And so the whole first book is what happens to the dream, the world of dreams without Daniel. As you can imagine, things start breaking down fairly quickly. Um, and I, it's by Cy Spurrier, so it's written really well. Uh, the art is really well done. It's got um, lots of, it's got lots of your favorite characters uh, from Sandman that dealt with uh, the dreaming, you know, like Cain and, Cain and Abel. And um, there's this new character, Judge Gallows, who takes over and... He's as bad as he sounds, Judge Gallows. Um, so this is worth getting if you're a fan of the Sandman universe. Um, it deal. It's got a lot. It's got some new characters, but a lot of the old characters are there, and uh, the art is good. The story's good. It's quite long. Um, let me make sure that it's all of these stories are written by Cy Spurrier. I think they are, yeah. So the whole book is written by Cy Spurrier, and I think it's really well done. Cy Spurrier is becoming one of my favorite writers. Um, I have, it's a case of where he's now becoming a trusted writer where I will just pick up anything written by him. Um, he is really remarkable this book is i can definitely recommend if you're a fan of the old sandman books you can definitely pick this up no problem and enjoy it uh and it, let me make i don't think i can show you the last page because yeah i can't show you the last page because it's what happens when something moves in to take control of the dreaming in Daniel's absence. I can't show you that. So that's the dreaming. And then the next book in the Sandman universe is Lucifer. 
Uh, I didn't. This is one of those books, you know. You can you can say it's long and thick because it's very complex and layered, or it's long and thick because it took a long time to to say what could have been said in just a couple of issues. And in this case, I think it's the latter. This thing could have been edited down to about two issues. Um, I I think it was wordy and overwrought and did too much thinking for its own good and was a little too high concept. And I got really, at times, it it didn't do, I don't think it did a good enough job at making its characters distinct enough. Uh, it was too easy to get um, these characters weren't fleshed out enough. It was too easy to get things confused with each other. Um, I This was not a book that I cared for at all. This is a solid skip, I think. It's not worth pouring root beer on. I didn't hate it, but I just didn't really care for it. I, this, I think there was an idea in here it, that just went on for way too long. It needed... I, I'm not even sure what the author was going for here. I was not really a fan of this book. Sad. Yeah. I, uh, what did I spend on this thing? So no, I, I didn't spend that much, so that's okay. I'm going to keep telling you to get a hoopla. Apparently you can. Now it's up to you. What's that now? I said you, you can get hoopla, so now it's up to you. <laughs> Just save the money there. I, I know. Your your friend told you last time. Right, I know, and and we talked. I think Travis and I talked on the phone, and I'm sorry, we we talked on Facebook. We texted back and forth trying to figure it out, and I'm we're I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm not sure how it's going to get done. Okay. I, I still don't know how I can do it. Not having a physical account with the library. I feel like we'll figure this out for you. Uh, please do. Please no, help me. <laughs> that's, that's a book that should have been hoopla. Yeah. I shouldn't have spent money on that book. The Dreaming, I'm happy to own and keep. I, I feel like Lucifer, I'm going to be donating back to the, donating to the library so some nice person like Kristen can go check it out and read it. That's right. <laughs> and be disappointed that way, right? Mm-hmm. All right, my be final. Be disappointed book. for free. Yeah, for free. Uh, my final book is probably my favorite. It's going to be in my top five of this year, I think. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, it's halfway through the year. I could be wrong. But right now it is. It's solidly in my top five. This is my digital thing. So we're going to see if we can show this on my iPad and it looks fine. Mm. That would be My Friend Dahmer by Dirk Baff Dirk. Is that his name? Durf? Durf. Oh, Durf. 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 So our crumb blurb date you love him i do love him have you heard of this book i have okay i have i don't own it though um durf what went to school with jeffrey Dahmer, and that is what this is about i'm trying to get some, some art here uh there's a pretty long introduction but his art is you know super i don't know how to explain his art but it goes very well with the story because it's not pretty it's not pretty art but mm -hmm. it's a story about jeffrey Dahmer. so you know, you get to learn a lot about Jeffrey and Durf throughout this whole thing and his friends and, you know, knowing him back in school and how he was. And it's so, it's so well done. It's so good. You re it's, it's really a story that only one guy could ever tell. Because, you know, you're not hearing about all the Jeffrey Dahmer murders. You're hearing about how he was back in school. Yeah. And how he was like the strange kid in his school. And somehow he ended up in his friend group. And this is that story. It's his story. It's Durf's story. So Durf was really friends with him? He was friends with him. Um, he kind of just went to school with him throughout the first like few years of high school, I believe. Uh -huh. I think it was high school. 
Re- Reed's probably listening to this. Like you're getting all of this wrong. He told me to read it, but, oh. <laughs> but um, yeah. Then toward the end of school, he started to be like friends with him in the sense that they would never hang out. Like he even says, he's like, I got a weird enough vibe from him that I knew I didn't want to hang out with him oh. like beyond school. But in school, they had inside jokes. You know, they made fun of people together. You know, it was a whole thing. And he tells the story of like his home life, uh, Jeffrey Dahmer's home life, and meeting his parents and how oh my his parents were weird and like all of the stuff that like you you won't just like get from a true crime book on Jeffrey Dahmer, for instance, because it's this guy's story and how like what he knew. And his experiences with him and he fills it in with like stuff that he learned later and stuff like that stuff from his friends and things but it's so good it's fascinating i you know i'm a big my favorite murder fan which is my favorite podcast ever what's it called my favorite murder oh i think you've talked to me about that before i really have so if you're into true crime at all and even if you're not this is a fascinating story. It's on Comixology Unlimited. So if you have that, it's free for you with your subscription. How much is Comixology Unlimited? Uh, it's $6 a month, I think. I should probably do that. You should. I should do that and Marvel uh, Unlimited, too, at this point. It'll save you some money, man. Yeah. I can't get Hoopla. I might as well do those both. Yeah, what's great about Comixology, um, there's like, you can get a ton of Boom stuff. A ton of like smaller publishers, fantagraphics, things that you like can't get elsewhere for free, especially. Um, there's a little bit of Marvel, you know, there's a good amount of image. Mm-hmm. They have a lot of stuff. But yeah, this was so great. So if you haven't checked this out, check it out. It is fascinating. I feel like this is a good one for everyone if you're interested in anything like that. And if you're like, hey, I wonder what Jeffrey Dahmer was like as a kid. Well, now you know. Yeah. Wow. You got me interested. Very interested. I think you'll like it. Um, Eric Whitehurst. Hey, Jess, I had a question. I bought the first Absolute Sandman volume, and I saw a video you said not to get them if you don't have Absolute Death, which I don't have. That is correct, and I put in the comment section that it was okay to buy because now Absolute Death is getting a reprint. Um, I think uh, January of 2020, Absolute Death is getting a reprint. Absolute Death was is out of print right now and way expensive, but it's getting a reprint, so it's okay to own Absolute Sandman. In uh, Go ahead and buy Absolute Sandman, all volumes, and just wait for the reprint of Absolute Death. Um, I was warning people away from it, uh, but I did put in the comment section uh to go ahead to um that there was a reprint of death coming out so it's okay to go ahead and um buy absolute sandman so everything's okay go ahead and buy absolutes of sandman uh just ain't mingling with the plebes affluent northern virginia citizens not so much you usually find hoopla in poorer communities the checkouts are subsidized. Huh. Well, I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't think that's right. I don't know anything about Hoopla. I mean, it may be right, but it also, I think it's broader than that. Uh, Forgerelli says, I wouldn't say it's true crime at all. Yeah, it's not. But at the same time, like, Jeffrey Dahmer commits crimes in it. <laughs> so if you're interested in that already, you will enjoy it. Yeah. Um, well, interestingly enough, Jake Forgerelli hates when I pour root beer on books. So I know he couldn't have tuned in just for that because he is a, not a proponent of it at all. He has come out and said that it's wrong. So Jake, you may want to tune out now because this is the part where I pour root beer on a book. Uh, let me say that these are my books i can do whatever i want with them and there's a reason i pour root beer on them and don't donate them to um a library or give them to a child it's because i think they are so bad i don't want them to represent 
comic books at all to anybody. I don't want them in the hands of anybody um, that they might make an impression on because they're so bad. I don't want somebody going, ew, this is what comic books are like. I don't want anything to do with comic books because there's so many good comic books out there. I want them to stop right here. This is where the bad comic books stop. This is where bad comic books go to their resting place. Omnidog's Vault, right here. So here's the bucket. And here is the root beer. Diet A and W, terrible root beer. Here's Sprecker's, because I'm thirsty. Great root beer. Now, I'm not blaming for once the writer in this book because I'm pretty sure editorial came to the writer and said, here's the story we want you to write. Here's the plot. Here's the story. Here's the outline. We came up with this idea and we're giving it to you to write. And this guy was a young writer at the time and he needed the work. And he said, okay, I'll take the job. And he did the best he could with what he had, because this is the stupidest retcon, in my opinion, ever. Well, I haven't read any of the Spider-Man retcons. I guess some of those are pretty bad, but I haven't read those. This is a terrible X-Men X -Men retcon that makes so little sense. It didn't have to be done this way. They could have introduced the character in a completely different way they could have come up with something that made sense. Instead, they came up with this really dumb idea of introducing this character named Vulcan and that Professor X had wiped everybody's memory out and um, hidden, hidden the story from view and had... Uh, wiped the story out from Moira McTaggart and uh, there was I'm talking about X-Men Deadly Genesis. This is awful and I don't blame Ed Brubaker at all because he's my favorite writer and I went back and forth in my head for months on this. This is a terrible book. It is so the, the ideas in this book are so poorly thought out it cannot be Ed Brubaker's fault. He, he's not capable of writing a book this bad, Lee. Um, editorial had to have come up with this idea and given it to him, and he said, I'll do my best, and that's what he did. But, I mean, give me a break. You're actually telling me that Professor X had a backup crew of these young, super inexperienced X-Men that he sent to the Savage Land to rescue, you know the story, and it's a terrible story. It's a terrible retcon. It's a god-awful story. I hate it. I hate it, hate it, hate it. And I'm sorry, Ed Brubaker. I'm sorry you had anything to do with it. I have nothing against you. You're my favorite writer ever in the history of writing comics. I love everything you do except for this book. But I don't want this to get into the hands of any impressionable youngster. And Jake, I'm sorry that you have to see this because I know you're not a fan of this at all, but I have to destroy this so that no impressionable eyes see it happen, see it, read it, understand it, don't want it to happen. Don't get Deadly Genesis. Don't read Deadly Genesis. Ah. Even with a bucket. Uh-oh. Almost tipped it over in my lap. Wouldn't that be Ed Brubaker's revenge? <laughs> it's going to spill on my keyboard here. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's going all over the place. Professor X's darkest secret revealed. I got a dark secret for you. 
This book's awful. And so is this root beer. Terrible book, terrible root beer. There you go. It's going to look real gross. <laughs> there you go. So I'm sorry, Ed. I love you. I love everything you've ever written, but this was the worst. So at this point, should I just like, should I? <laughs> oh, don't do Frost Top on that. <laughs> but you own Deadly Genesis too, huh? Apparently, yeah. I've never what, read it. What made you buy it? It was cheap, and I was like, Brubaker. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what made me do it too. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, you know, I'm in an X Men, X Men. I keep saying X Man. I'm in an X Men phase right now, and so it's part of my. I I've read it actually a couple times recently because it's in my um, it's in my War of Kings read through, and uh, I read it in um, giant size X Men hardcover. So I've come across it a couple times, and then I just pulled it because it, I have it in like three other formats. And I said, I got to get rid of this thing. It's awful. Well, and you just had a trade. That's not too bad. It could have been a nice fancy thing. Oh my gosh. Think if I paid like $35 for an oversized hardcover of it. Yeah, that would have been bad. <laughs> well, Kristen, this has been great. You're always interesting with your interesting choices of uh, books. I enjoy doing the reviews with you. Um, and I look forward to doing them again with you in two weeks. Yeah, definitely. I was going to say, we didn't have the goose shout out. Oh. So I'm being handed something even better than a goose. Oh. Here's the, here's the real life Willow. <laughs> say hi, Willow. She's like, no, I don't like this. There she is. Hello, sweetheart. Hey, my little goose. Yeah, actually, I see the flirk and, and goose right behind you. Yeah. So, actually, we will have to have you show them right after the cat. She's over it anyway. I like to call her my mix between goose and Nick Fury because of the eye. <laughs> <laughs> you should get a little custom-made eye patch. Oh, I'm sure she would hate that. <laughs> It'd be on for like two seconds. Yeah, here we go. Here they are. There they are. There they are. Wait, oh, okay, yeah, there there's the flirking. Now you yeah. can see the flirking really flirkinating. Blah! Uh, <laughs> it's really glow in the dark, too. But, oh, you know, you cool. Show I didn't know that. Now you need it, right? Yes. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so this was great. And uh, in two weeks, we'll be back. And uh, I'll hopefully have more books read i will um in two weeks i should have uh well we try and keep it to four or five books so yeah maybe i'll read this <laughs> just kidding <laughs> i feel like i don't want to now <laughs> and what would you pour on it um tears tears <laughs> tears yeah yeah um yeah it was awful but uh, thank you to the chat and thank you to Kristen for showing me how to pop the chat out. That was interesting. It's the best. Yeah. And uh, someday I'll get Hoopla. But um, until then, please uh, subscribe if you can. Give us a like and leave a comment. I always respond to comments. And thank you for watching. Thank you for chatting. And peace and love. Peace and love.